The question of Jesus' divinity has captivated and challenged believers and skeptics for centuries. How can Jesus, a man who lived and breathed on earth, also be God? This question lies at the very heart of Christian faith and forms the foundation of our understanding of God. The New Testament, particularly the Gospels, provides compelling evidence for Jesus' divinity, Jesus' own words and actions, as well as the testimonies of his disciples, point towards a reality that transcends the limitations of human understanding. Through an exploration of key passages, we will delve into the mystery of Jesus' divinity and grapple with the implications for our lives. This essay will examine specific verses from the New Testament, such as Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, John chapter 20, verse 17, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, John chapter 10, verse 30, and Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 17. These passages offer profound insights into who Jesus is and why Christians believe in his divinity. By carefully examining these verses, we can gain a deeper understanding of this central tenet of the Christian faith. Matthew chapter 27 verse 46 recounts the heart-wrenching cry of Jesus as he hung on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These words filled with anguish and despair might seem to contradict the notion of Jesus' divinity. However, a closer look reveals a deeper truth about the nature of Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus, in his humanity, experienced the full weight of human suffering, including the feeling of abandonment by God. This separation from the Father was a necessary part of his atoning sacrifice for the sins of humanity. By taking upon himself the sins of the world, Jesus became a curse in our place, experiencing the Father's wrath so that we might be reconciled to God. This verse does not diminish Jesus' divinity, rather it highlights the profound depth of his love. Jesus, fully God, chose to experience the depths of human suffering, even to the point of feeling forsaken by God. His cry on the cross is a testament to the genuineness of his humanity and the immeasurable love he has for us. After his resurrection, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene and said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. John chapter 20, verse 17. This verse offers a glimpse into the unique relationship between Jesus and God the Father. Jesus refers to God as my Father and your Father, acknowledging both his unique sonship and the adopted sonship of believers through him. This distinction underscores the truth that Jesus' relationship with the Father is distinct from ours. He is the eternal Son, while we become children of God through faith in Him. However, the verse also reveals a profound unity. Jesus states, He is ascending to my God and your God, indicating that while His relationship with the Father is unique, we share in the same God. This shared relationship is made possible through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, which bridges the gap between humanity and God. Section 4 in the beginning, unpacking John 1, 1, 3. John's Gospel begins with a powerful declaration. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. These opening verses, known as the prologue, present a profound and concise statement about Jesus' divine nature. The word, identified as Jesus, is described as being with God and God from the very beginning. This dual affirmation emphasizes Jesus' eternal existence and his inseparable unity with the Father. The phrase in the beginning echoes the creation account in Genesis, emphasizing Jesus' role as the agent of creation. John clearly states that all things were made through the word, highlighting Jesus' creative power and authority. This passage leaves no room for doubt. Jesus, the Word, is not merely a creation of God. He is God himself, eternally existing alongside the Father and actively participating in the creation of all things. Section 5, I and the Father are one, deciphering John 10, 30. In John 10, 30, Jesus makes a bold statement that infuriated the Jewish leaders, I and the Father are one. This declaration of unity with the Father is not merely a statement of shared purpose or will, it is a claim to divine identity. The Greek word used here for one, hen, 
denotes a complete and inseparable unity. Jesus' words sparked outrage because they were understood as a direct claim to divinity. The Jewish leaders accused him of blasphemy, confirming that they recognized the weight of his statement. Jesus was not merely claiming to be a prophet or a messenger of God, he was identifying himself as being equal with God. This verse serves as a cornerstone for understanding the relationship between Jesus and the Father. They are not two separate entities, but rather two persons existing in perfect unity. This concept, known as the Trinity, is a mystery that surpasses human understanding but lies at the core of the Christian faith. Section 6. The Supremacy of Christ. Examining Colossians, January 15th, 17, Colossians, January 15th, 17, provides a majestic portrait of Jesus' preeminence in all creation. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Paul describes Jesus as the image of the invisible God, highlighting his role as the perfect representation of the Father. The term firstborn does not imply that Jesus was created, but rather that he holds a position of supremacy and authority over all creation. The passage emphasizes that all things were created in him, through him and for him. This threefold repetition underscores Jesus' central role in the entirety of creation. He is not merely a part of creation, he is its source, its sustainer, and its ultimate goal. Colossians, January 15th, 17, leaves no doubt about the supremacy and divinity of Jesus Christ. 